Hi everybody, um, so one of the most uh, popular videos on my channel is um, how to make uh, uh, modular dungeon tile like these are they're designed to be like kind of like a courtyard or something like that um, out of uh, uh, foam core and uh, MDF like really really cheap materials pretty quick and easy um, but uh, I was expanding on my set um, I was making some uh, some hallways and uh, I found like a way easier way like it makes these guys look super complicated I found like a, a really really quick easy way to make um, these uh, like flagstone kind of cobblestone tiles for like the inside of like a keep you know or something like that like a castle uh, I was kind of inspired by uh, season eight of Game of Thrones. I was watching the, the episode with the big battle with the White Walkers, like inside um, NFL, you know. So uh, and and they also they also work like outdoors too, but they look really really nice for like the the inside of like a, a keep kind of thing. Um, <clears throat> So I'm going to show you how I made these, and it's just like so quick, so easy, so simple. You can bang out a ton of, like, a ton in like a couple of hours. If you're interested in all the, these are new, uh, I'm going to show you how we did these. If you're interested in these, including the, the uh, Roman arches, and these are molded in plaster from uh, pink stuff, um, insulation foam. This stuff. Um, this is this is all in my um, modular dungeon tiles playlist on my channel. Um, <clears throat> but this is I've I've been experimenting with this stuff, and I found an unbelievably easy, quick way to um, make these uh, kind of flagstone, cobblestone uh, hallway tiles. Um, so I did a few. And I thought, yeah, like, I, you know, I'll use them as hallways. Um, and uh, I did them on these uh, long pieces of MDF. Um, some people use, like, vinyl tiles, you know, like um, the kind of stuff that you put down in your kitchen or something. Uh, but um, <clears throat> MDF, it's wood. It's a wood product. It's basically like sawdust that's glued together. So these did warp a little bit. Um, I th These ones I showed in a previous video how I did these, these kind of worked a little bit too. Um, but uh, I'm gonna do something a little bit different to try and prevent some warping. Um, so I've got a, this is a, just one of these little cut off pieces of um, MDF that I have. And I actually, so I was varnishing, I was spraying varnish onto some minis uh, with the airbrush and I thought well maybe it will soak up some of that and then it won't warp as much like um, uh, you know if I um, <clears throat> if I do that but the so these are not quite like four by four inches this is four by four inches these are not quite and I kind of like that because you can butt them up against each other and then the MDF doesn't show like it kind of hides itself a little bit under them when you're playing on top of them um, but so this new method is gonna make these guys look like ridiculously complicated compared to how easy these are to to do and paint there's just it's really really quick so I'll show you the, the first step is the same so I'm just gonna I'm gonna glue one side of the uh, I'm gonna glue one side of this MDF to this piece of black foam core. Just gonna brush it on there. And hopefully, you know, fingers crossed, um, so one thing that I can do is I can brush it on both sides and then doing that so as the glue dries when 
uh, when you do it on one side, the glue dries and then it wants to contract. It wants to pull on that side as it dries. So if I do it on both sides and then glue it, this is already a little like warped in one direction. Um, if I do it on, on both sides and then glue it, then as the glue dries on both sides, it will want to contract evenly on both sides. But um, when you, yeah, so this, hopefully this just helps with the, um, with it kind of contracting at the same rate on both sides. And then, like normally I would just set a book on top of this and then, you know, flatten it so that it would dry evenly. But I'm gonna try an experiment and then see if doing it on both sides helps it to kind of um, contract evenly. And uh, and then this side, this is totally dry. Well, I'm not totally dry, but we'll see. So it's only been a few minutes and this is already pretty much dry. Um, <clears throat> so I have a, uh, a T-square and it has a little lip on it and I, I feel like it's just very useful for doing stuff like this. Um, <clears throat> so I'm just gonna measure out a little grid. Um, <clears throat> and you don't have to do this. You don't have to, to do a grid um, on your, um, <clears throat> on your, your pieces if you're making these tiles. It's just that the way that my group, my, um, D&D group likes to play, um, is that, uh, well, I'll just show you. So we, so I have, oh, we're making these. I have these cobblestones, right? And you can see that these are broken up, but these are, you can still see the grid lines. And that's because of the way that we that we usually like to play. It's just easier if um, if I have you know like a character over here, and then I have they're fighting like monsters or something. Then we just go like this: one, two, you know, and then or you know like they can move a maximum of six. Um, they, these are five feet each. So if you're, you know, in D&D, like humans can move 30 feet, so it's like one, two, three, four, five, you know, um, attack of opportunity, attack of opportunity, attack of opportunity. Um, <clears throat> and then big models, um, they, they move like this, like one, two, you know. Um, <clears throat> and then uh, actually, <laughs> Yeah, I did a I, I did a video on uh, speed painting these guys, uh, batch painting these guys. If you're interested in that too, that's in my minis playlist. Um, <clears throat> but uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna make these grids first. We're gonna make the the four inch by four inch grid first. Where's my T square? There it is. some lines now I'm going to switch to a ruler doesn't need to be all the way through you know you're we're mainly just um, just making these these scoring lines for later all 
All right, and now what I'm gonna do is just peel the, um, the tops off of them. And I'm not worried about the um, getting all the paper off or anything like that. Um, I actually want some of the paper to add a little bit of texture. Um, Now that I've got these little score lines um, exposed, I'm going to hit them with the heat gun. And this is like unbelievably easy. <laughs> Check it out. Okay, so all that does is it kind of like um, makes those uh, those little like um, one by one inch kind of uh, shapes more visible. Go ahead and uh, <clears throat> score them a little bit more to kind of break up the little tiles a little bit more uh, just to kind of create some more like interesting little shapes um, Okay, now that I've got the little stones defined, I'm just gonna go in and kind of texture them a little bit. And I'm just using like a rock, like, you know, any any rock is fine. <laughs> texturing rocks with rock texture, you know? So, or texturing, yeah. Yeah, you get it. Um, <clears throat> and then after I've added a little bit of texture, then I'm going to come back in with the heat gun and I'm going to redefine those little score lines um, after I've, you know, broken them up, create some more, more texture. There we go. You can see how quick and easy that is. Um, just this one's quite the way I want it to and make sure that I have my one by one inch grids defined. All right. And now the, uh, the moment of truth, I'm gonna seal it with, um, like you could use um, Mod Podge at this point, or you could use more like acrylic medium, um, but I wanna kinda seal some of those little pores and add a little bit more kinda stone texture. So I'm gonna use um, one of my favorite uh, things to use. I'm gonna use some uh, pumice gel. And this is just a, um, it's like a really, really fine grit kind of stone that's dissolved in, or, you know, uh, in um, acrylic medium. So, find a crap brush. There we go. So I'm just gonna spread this stuff all over and it's just gonna, it's gonna kind of seal it a little bit 
but it's also going to um, add a little bit of texture to the um, to the foam core to kind of make it look, look more stone-like. Make sure that I'm getting into those cracks and stuff. It sort of acts like a mortar. It fills in those cracks a little bit or like how dirt would. <laughs> if it were exposed to the elements. And I can come back in later over the top of it and like use a little bit of water and then just kind of, or even go over it with your finger just to take out those um, brush strokes lines if I just go in a circular kind of motion or a random kind of motion it takes out some of those uh, brush strokes. That actually looks kind of cool just with the um, the light in between the dark stones just like that. I kind of like that. Like a light tile grout or something. Probably use that too. All right, this guy's totally dry. Um, and uh, check it out, no warping. Um, it is like, it's not the best glue job. You know, it could come up a little bit. Um, I'm not really sure. I'm gonna keep working on that. I'll let you know if I come with anything better. But, uh, <clears throat> so time for the paint job. And then this is super easy. Like I just, this is, this is definitely the coolest part. Um, <clears throat> so first off, uh, I am gonna prime it and I would not recommend doing this with a rattle can primer because I think that you could melt the, um, the foam core stuff, the, the foam part of the foam core. I think that the, the whatever it is that's in, you know, rattle can, like the accelerant or whatever, you can melt stuff like this. So I'm gonna use an airbrush primer. Um, <clears throat> I'm gonna go for a black. Um, airbrush primer and I'm gonna do it on both sides because I again like I want these guys to just lay flat and I haven't had as much trouble with the square pieces but with my hallway pieces they have kind of buckled up a little bit which I don't like um, <clears throat> but the uh, the the this is this is cool we're gonna dig this Okay, this guy is mostly dry, uh, not like totally bone dry, um, but it doesn't matter for this. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna show you this crazy easy way that I've found to um, do this painting super, super fast. Uh, so I've got a blender brush, this is a fan brush, or you could use like, uh, this is a, a cheapo makeup brush that I use for terrain. Um, it's a, a, like an e.l.f. Um, makeup brush and I think this was like four dollars. This was way more than that. <laughs> this is for like oil painting. Uh, this is a you know Robert Simmons um, fan brush blender but just this works really well for this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this uh, these pan pigments which is just like it's just sort of ground up um, like pastel pigments and, and it's in like sort of like a makeup like compact kind of uh, jar and then I'm just gonna kind of like dry brush over it with the pigments 
and and the uh, you know like the the what's it called the primer could be bone dry for this or it could be like kind of like slightly um, you know wet like slightly tacky and it'll it'll pick up the, um, the pigments like the pigments will stick to it um, <clears throat> But, you know, we don't want it black. We want it to be more like a stone. It's a little shiny. It's, I'm trying to film at night and it's a little dark in here and like the, my uh, desk light is like really picking up on the camera. But, um, so I have like a white, I have a, um, a gray, some browns I have like this is kind of like a burnt umber um, I just use these colors a lot I use burnt umber and raw sienna burnt sienna white and gray a lot for like terrain I like kind of like the slate kind of look and this just it, it's a really easy way to get that kind of slate like sort of stone look like really quickly just dry brushing all over something. In fact, I'm not, I mean, I'm not even taking, doing the extra stuff of taking any off. I'm just dry brushing the pigments on there and it dulls down the, like the Vallejo, I love their, their primer. It's great stuff, but it's a little tiny bit gloss. It's kind of like a satin. Um, so yeah, I want to dull it down because stones are not glossy unless they're like wet, you know? I don't want my stones to look like perma wet. So yeah, now, um, <clears throat> now what's the other colors on there too? Some raw sienna. This is the same stuff. This is just pigments. It's just that they they ran out of the the pan pastel version of these at my art supply store. So I. I grabbed the, the jar of pigments, and, but this was like, this gigantic jar of pigment was like $6 at my art supply place, so. But yeah, we're definitely getting like some kind of slate look, like that Colorado slate look. Uh, and uh, I don't know I'm white. I feel like Bob Ross. What a happy little tree over here. Um, and then don't worry if it goes down into the cracks because what I'm going to do next is a uh, an oil wash and and you should you should do your white last because that's going to be the highlight that really makes things pop like you want to go from dark to light basically all right so I've got that nice and dark or I mean <laughs> like lighter now and uh, what I'm gonna do now is uh, one I'm gonna seal down um, my uh, I'm gonna seal down my pigments so that when I do my wash over them they don't just wash away um, <clears throat> So when, what you could use for this is you could just use hairspray, um, but I have a, an actual like a charcoal uh, pencil drawing fixative. I'm a, uh, I'm a mixed media artist, so I just I just have this stuff lying around my art studio. Uh, I have some pastel charcoal and pencil final fixative and it's supposed to be matte but then, again this is kind of a little bit of a satin it should not be in this in the house um, and then I can I can even go back over that you know again like on top of the, the fixative like um, it's like slightly Tacky, but this will dull down the satin kind of of the uh, of the fixative, 
and it says final fixative. There's like workable fixatives and final fixatives, and you can use like final fixatives or workable fixative. You're supposed to be able to like do a pencil drawing, spray something on top of it, and then just keep working on top of it without smudging your your pencil marks. I found that hairspray does the exact same thing. It seems like Tresemme works the best. <laughs> um, so I'm just gonna, gonna, I feel like that kind of, I lost a little bit there with my fix it and spray. So I'm just gonna lighten it up a little bit again. But again, super fast, super quick, super easy. And don't worry if you go too light, too, because the next step, we're going to go over it with some oils, and it's going to run into all those cracks and really define all of the ridges and the, um, the highlights and kind of tie everything together. I'm just going to make sure that I get all of the kind of glossy areas. And then the, the oil is totally matte, you know, it's totally dull, and it has a dulling effect when you do an oil wash. Um, I do have a black too, like I could go in and, you know, could you could use, you could do this with paint too, and dry brush it with paint, but that's, this is just so much easier. And it looks good, it looks very stone-like. So now I'm going to, Quick. Uh, yeah. All right. That's fine. So I'm going to make an oil wash with a couple. Say a burnt umber. bit of yellow ochre maybe some like well no I want this to be inside I was gonna say olive green but I think I'm gonna go with a, a black to really get in those recesses Now I'm just really gonna thin these down a lot. Some mineral spirits. And mineral spirits, apparently, I mean, don't quote me on this, but it doesn't seem like they do melt styrofoam. Like I've been experimenting with this a fair amount and I've, I haven't had any kind of like melty issues from, uh, from mineral spirits. Um, not yet, at least. I'm using crappy brushes too. So I just want to dissolve this so that it's nice and thin and runny and really gets into those cracks. And the reason why I'm doing this with oil instead of acrylic paint is, um, well, I'll just show you. Show you why. So I'm actually gonna I'm gonna work from light to dark. Um, usually with oil paints you would work dark to light, the other way around, uh, and you would build up your your darkest or you would put your highest highlights on the surface. But this is cool. This is what's cool about oil paints is you can just wipe it off, just like that. So it just runs down into the cracks and then it takes, I mean, it takes a really long time to dry. So basically you can go over it with the, um, with the oils 
And you know, it's not really mattering. It's not really <laughs> mattering what color I put on there. I'm just gonna wipe it off and get it down into the cracks. So, but I can, uh, it does kind of weather it a little bit. It gives it an earthy kind of tone. Um, and then it kind of ties everything together, all the highlights and the, um, the different colors and stuff and gives it a nice earthy look to it. Um, I'm actually liking the different colors. Should be using a bigger brush for this actually, for terrain stuff. Um, but yeah, I'm just gonna put some on and then just kind of wipe it off like that just to get some some variations some different uh, Like if this were acrylic even if it were a wash it would still be drying on the surface, which is what I don't want. I want the um, I want it to run down in the recesses and I want to keep my highlights that I put in on top And then that's, you know, the quick and dirty version. Um, like you can, you could oil paint these. You could, you know, you could do whatever you want, but um, just, you know, this is what it looks like when it's dry. Or I, you know, I could go back in and I could do it again. I could do another wash on there. And these are actually, I think I did these guys like a little dull coat or a lacquer or something. And then I can go over the top of the dull coat with some, you know, with the oils again, and it's fine. It just kind of stains the that top coat. But yeah, that's what that uh, that's what that looks like. And then it's just that's a, a super easy, quick way to make some nice, um, you know, dungeon like rooms. Or I think these actually would look really, really good for like a courtyard, or even you know, inside of a a keep or something like that like I I've been thinking about doing like something with a keep uh, and I'll show you what I'm working on <laughs> like uh, some nice um, stone you know walls to to go along with the um, you know like it looks like a like a courtyard or a keep and then yeah like on this guy I did the same thing as well I hit it with the um, you know, I, I made this a little lighter because I wanted this to sort of, I wanted these to be darker uh, so that it would force them down more and then have these be lighter on the, the top so that they, um, but it looks like it's, you know, made from the same stone. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, that's my new super quick, easy way to do um, flagstones. All right, yeah, that's the um, the finished paint job. Um, <clears throat> I I think these guys look really, really great. You know, considering the like how quick and easy the paint job is, and then I might even go over these again with another little oil wash, like a black, to kind of get there, get in the recesses a little better. Um, but uh, I really like them. I think they're they're great for the indoors of like. A, something I plan on using them you know for um, like uh, inside of um, you know a uh, like a keep a, a castle something like that anyways um yeah hope you uh, hope you enjoyed it hope you feel inspired um, thanks for watching